Okay, we're going to do this definite integral. Our answer will just be a number using u substitution. So anytime you got a fraction, one thing that you can try, it doesn't always work, just let the denominator be u. Exactly the way it looks. And then take du, take the derivative. What do we get? 2x plus 5 dx. And see if that's sitting right in front of you. Oh, luckily it is. See, here's du, and that's u. So this will be a 1 over u du. But I got to change my limits. My limits of integration, these were x equals. I need u equals, so I need to plug those numbers in here. So when x equals 1, u will be, I'll write this out, 1 plus 5 plus 3. I think that's 9. And when x equals 9, might need my calculator for this one, u will be 81 plus 45 plus 3. I'm plugging in 9 there. So that would be 126, I think we'll get 129. Yeah, that looks right. So those will be my new limits, 9, 129. And then I know, if remember, if you get here and you're like, oh, I don't know that antiderivative, then you probably picked the wrong U or you shouldn't be using u substitution to begin with. If you don't know this guy's antiderivative, you wasted your time, or you goofed somewhere. We do. We know the antiderivative 1 over u. That will be the natural log of the absolute value of u evaluated from these two different numbers. And we changed our limits of integration. So I'm just, I don't have to go back in and plug in x values. We're done with x. Once we got here, we were done with x. So this would be natural log of 129 minus natural log of 9. Those are both positive, so I don't need the absolute value. And in fact, I could write that as a fraction if I wanted to. So this is a perfectly fine way to write it, or using rules of logs, I could write that. Okay, let's do another one. Okay, now here, the, I keep saying, call the bottom u. Let's see if that works here. There are no rules when it comes to integration by substitution. If one thing always worked, that would just be the way. That's not the case here. If I let the bottom be u, then du would be 8t dt. I do not, I could get an 8. I could be like times 8 times 1 8. I can get the 8. You ain't going to pick up a t. You're not allowed to do this. T, t. You cannot add in extra variables because you're not allowed to pull a variable outside an integral. I could pull an 8 outside. I can't pull a 1 over t outside. That's just illegal. I made that up. You're not allowed to do that. It doesn't matter what you do. You're not going to get a t up here that I need. So this didn't work. That failed. We're going to try something different. We want to think here, wait a minute, what? Antiderivatives do I know that kind of look like this? I know that the antiderivative of 1 over x squared dx is the arctangent or inverse tangent of x plus c. So that kind of has the right form, only I've got that extra 4 there. Well, maybe if I could just make this like an x squared. I want to kind of think 4t squared is playing the role of x squared. Now oh, then, maybe if we tried u is 2t, 
then what would u squared be? Uh, okay, this looks like this might work. So I could have that be like a one plus u squared. Okay, we're on the right track. So if u is 2t, then du would be 2 dt. Remember, you have to have exactly, perfectly, your du sitting in your integral. I don't have a 2 here. Well, I can put in a 2. I can, you can put in constants multiplied, not added or subtracted, multiplied or divided, as long as you put it in and take it out. Okay, then this will be, that will be du. And that right there will be a u squared. Then I'll get something that has the form, something that looks like that. I know how to do that. That's an, that's arctan of u. All right, now I got to change my limits. This is where people mess up. They forget to change the limits. These are T. I need U limits. So when T equals zero, U is twice T. Here's, here's what I'm substituting in for, twice zero. That's still gonna be zero. And when T equals pi over two, U then will be twice that which will be pi. All right, then that one half is going to come along for the ride. I'm going to have from u equals zero to u equals pi. One over one plus u squared du, which will be one half the arctan of u evaluated from u equals zero to u equals pi. So like none of those are pretty number. Arctan of zero was zero. So we're going to end up with one half the inverse tangent of pi, which is not a nice pretty number. That's not tangent of pi, which is undefined. Uh, think about that. Now, tangent of pi, I think, is zero. This is inverse tangent of pi, which is just some nasty decimal. Okay. This is our last one. Yeah, one more. Okay, so we want the definite integral. Our answer is going to be a number. 0 to 1, 3x to the 4th over x to the 5th plus 9 squared dx. A lot of mistakes happen on this one. Like we've had so many examples today where we end up with the natural log. There's, we're not going to have any logs in this problem at all. If you've got something in parentheses, it's a good thing to try for you. So like, try. That's what makes integrals so much harder than derivatives. Derivatives, we've got product rule, quotient rule, power rule. We've got all these rules. They work 100% of the time. You know, I think about it. Chain rule, all these, they just work. Antiderivatives, there's a lot of, yeah, let's try this. Oh, that didn't work. Let's try this. That didn't work. There are no like formulas that will always work for antiderivatives. You got to guess and check sometimes. So I've got something sitting in parentheses. Let's try making that u. Then du would be 5x to the fourth. Derivative of 9 is 0. dx. And really all you're looking for is your, your variables here, the numbers we can play with. I've got a three instead of a five. I can handle that. So maybe we would pull that three out. 
because it was just in the way. I want to put in a five here. Now, see, I just made stuff up. Where'd that five come from? I made it up. I can't just put that in there unless I also take it out. Now, look, the, these are, you have to believe, those are equal. That's the same thing. Why did I do that? Because now DU is exactly sitting in front of me. That's DU. And that right there is you. So I'm going to have three fits. That comes along for the ride. I'll fix my limits in a minute. DU over U squared. Don't forget that squared. All right. Now, that if I left it like this, that's a huge mistake. That's a definite integral. It's got limits on it. This answer is a number. That's an indefinite integral. That's a function. It's literally impossible for that equal sign to be true. These cannot be equal. I need to get my limits on here. So when x equals 0, these are x limits. U will be 0 to the fifth plus 9. That's 9. And when x equals 1, u will be 1 to the fifth plus 9. That would be 10. These are my new limits now. Now that equals true. This is a true statement. OK, now here, I'm going to rewrite this as u to the negative 2 power. I didn't do any calculus there. That's just rules of exponents. This is not, don't think just because you have one over something that it's going to be a natural log. I know we've had a bunch of natural logs pop up today. One over junk is not necessarily natural log. That's not u to the first power. That's u to the second power in the bottom. This is just power rule. That power is going to go up by one, negative one plus two, sorry, negative two plus one would be negative one, divide by the new exponent, evaluated from nine to 10. So that's negative three fifths times one over u, that's what u to the negative one is, evaluated from 9 to 10. And now we plug in top minus plug in bottom. That would be negative 3 fifths, 1 tenth minus 1 ninth, which like we'll go ahead and clean this up. My common denominator there would be 90. So this would be multiply top and bottom by 9. 9 over 90, multiply top and bottom by 10, 10 over 90. So that's negative 3 fifths times negative 1 90th. The negatives cancel. Uh, I think we can cancel a 3 here and get a 30 in the bottom. So I think uh, 5 times 30, I think we get 1 over 150. So this function here, if you were to graph this guy out, if you were to find the net area between that graph and the x-axis between x equals 0 and x equals 1, it would be only a tiny little bit of positive area would be your net. And in fact, I think this guy is always positive in that region, so we wouldn't even have any negatives. Just be 1 over 150. And that's a good place to stop.